Okay, yeah, so, so yeah, my name is Ian Hawes. I'm from the University of Waikato, I'm, uh, which I'm based in Tauranga, which is um, the newest part of the university. I'm going to take you on a, on a trip under the ice cover of some of my favorite Antarctic lakes. And we're going to look at microbial landscapes. So microbial landscapes are landscapes which are built by, um, just by bacteria. Um, and we'll, we'll, um, this is one of my all-time favorite lakes. It's Lake Vanda. It's in the dry valleys, the McMurdo dry valleys. Um, and these valleys are the coldest and the driest place um, pretty much on the planet. Um, and when Scott's guys were down there, they made a pretty astute observation that they saw no living thing. Um, and they weren't far off because they, were, they didn't do what we did. They didn't go underneath the ice of that lake. And had they done that, they would have seen that the bottom of the lake from the surface down to more than 55 meters is completely covered in life. It's completely covered in these thick mats of complex structures which are all built out of bacteria. Um, and and uh, there is no particularly advanced um, form of life in these lakes. Um, because they're too, too extreme environment and they're too isolated. Uh, but to get into and see, see these environments, you've got to jump through a hole in the ice. Um, and what happens when you do? So this is under the ice of Lake Van der You kind of go through a hole, um, a tube in the ice, and the hole might be six meters deep because the, the ice is sometimes six meters thick. And when you drop out into a water co column, which is sometimes absolutely crystal clear, it's as clear as this room is here. Um, and it's got these amazingly sculptured um, ice surfaces underneath it, which remind me of the cathedral um, in Liverpool. And I often talk about this as being in the blue cathedral. It's like, it's like driving in stained glass and floating around the, the, around the calm, uh, quiet halls of a, of a cathedral. Just imagine yourself floating around the, the sky up there. That's kind of what it's like. Um, and what do you see when you get to the bottom? You see these amazing structures which are built entirely of bacteria. Um, what we're seeing here is decades of, of accumulated growth of, of, of bacteria, um, and they're forming these extraordinary structures and shapes just by their coordinated behavior. And the colors that you see, the colors, is, it's, it's, it's the different functions of bacteria all color-coded for you, That's, uh, so you can understand exactly what's going on. Um, if I took a cross-section through that, you see those pits and those pores you, um, the lighting's a bit too bright, but you, you will be able to see the annual bands, which are, which are like about half a millimeter of growth each year. And these things are just sitting on the bottom of the lake, growing taller and taller and taller. Um, OK, so why are these things interesting? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a friend here, um, Dawn Sumner, who I do a lot of research with at the moment. She's sitting in, the, in a hole. We're making, making a hole through the ice of Lake Joyce. It's ice is six meters thick. And when we go through, we're going to see these structures in the bottom. And Dawn very astutely pointed out to us that these types of structures that we see are the closest things that she's ever seen um, on, in modern Earth to some of the, 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 the oldest known fossils of life we've seen on our planet. This is a cross-section of a of a stromatolite um, from South Africa. It's 2.4 billion years ago. And these types of, um, of structures, all built out of bacteria, um, are sitting on the bottom of these lakes. And these are the closest analogs that we have to some of these, these totally ancient um, environments. Um, the, the little rods and things you see in these structures are made of calcite, which forms the rocks um, in those, those fossil structures. I want to briefly talk about the most extraordinary place that I've ever been in my life, which is Lake Untrasee, which is on the far side of the continent, two or two, where we normally work. But it's the only place we've ever dived where we find these extraordinary things called conical mounds. And these are about 7,000 years old. And they are, they are, again, they're built entirely out of layer after layer of bacteria. Um, and they are the only place on the planet where you can see these. This is just saying what it's like, and showing how hard it really is to dive in ice. You have to be able to fall in a hole elegantly. Okay, that's the only skill required. Um, um, and if we'd have gone to Antarctica this year, we'd have gone with, um, uh, with, uh, with Dawn's program, we'd have been hunting for this particular bacterium called Formidium pseudopreci. Um, and the reason why we'd be hunting for it is because it grows in a, this is that these are a close-up micrograph of these, um, these bacteria. Um, they're all motile, they can all move around. Um, and the ones in this, this particular type, it forms this, this thing called an oxygen oasis. 
And what's an oxygen oasis? An oxygen oasis is a place where oxygen is produced in a place which is full of sulfide. So sulfide is a toxic chemical to nearly everything. Um, and, so, and we have these, these layers of this cyanobacterium, this, this bacterium, which produces oxygen. This is a graph of oxygen versus depth into the sulfur. Um, how do we get those profiles? Um, we sit on the bottom of the lake, 40 minutes, remaining completely motionless, and just going like this. And we lower, we're sticking these electrodes down through these, uh, down through these sediments, and we can produce these types of profiles of oxygen concentration and sulfide concentration. Okay, so, why should I care? Why should I care? Um, and the reason why we care about this is because we're thinking about these things of whiffs of oxygen in a sulfidic environment. When we think of climate change, we think we're pretty good at it, but we're not very good at it compared to some of the organisms that have gone before us. About two and a half billion years ago, when the Earth was a pretty young place, bacteria learned the trick of producing oxygen, and that changed life. They, they invented production of oxygen through photosynthesis, which allowed all of our advanced life forms to take over. And that's the phenomenon that we're looking at um, in these Antarctic lakes in our next program. So, if we've, been, we've been doing this program for about 30 years now. Uh, we've come a long way. We started out um, diving in a place where we were told by the experts that we wouldn't find anything. Um, we found that there is something there, um, and we found that the there is Antarctica, all these very odd forms of, um, forms of treasures and scientific, scientific treasures um, which allow us to study systems that are well beyond our understanding of the normal. Um, they're analogues for our earliest, um, our earliest evolution of life on, on the planet. Okay, so thanks to you all for coming out. It's great to have you. It's such a great, fantastic turnout. Thanks to all of my colleagues over many, many years um, and all the people who've supported our work over that time. And that's me. Thank you.